Hey, welcome back everybody to another exciting adventure with yours truly, Derek T. Stevens and the illustrious, also sensational, strawberry tart, raspberry tart, same difference. Sid, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty darn good. Uh, let's throw this out there just for everybody. Uh, it's storming like the Dixon, Dickens and Dixon, that was hard to say, uh, and they lost the internet for a while and some electricity, so uh, Sid is all powerful, but she's not really good at controlling the weather just yet. So if we have any problems, it's because we're, we're having some technical issues on that end. It's storming and raining here in, in North Carolina as well, so please bear with us. But with that said, we got so much to do tonight. Uh, tonight, I've been really inspired. I've been watching some uh, cowboy movies. I, and actually trying to dig up some old uh, Galaxy Rangers, the cartoon, because I really loved what uh, Eve, my Lipchon, uh, and Miss Sid here had some sort of Western cowboy sorts of themes. And we may not even go this direction. That's cool if we don't, but we're in the concept phase, so let's start exploring that. And speaking of concepts, because this is an MMO concept art class, I, I have on my screen all worked out in, uh, in Manga Studio 05, and then imported back into Photoshop so you guys can see this. But I kind of wanted to walk you through a process. A lot of you guys and gals have been in my art classes before. And uh, I know how Sid loves our spot blacks. These little guys right here. You, you love them, Sid, right? Um, I love them with no, all my do. heart. I know you do. You're a terrible liar. Well, this is the first. I had to come up with this demon of despair. And we needed to make him look humanoid-esque looking. So this is the first round. And so I, I, I pr try to practice what I preach. So I threw down some spot blacks, what he likes, and actually he liked, liked the floating guy, but one of the more human sort of like this. So then I came to this little guy, but uh, both him and I agree that it looks a little too much like Gollum from uh, Lord of the Rings. So we move over here to this guy here, and this is, again, all done in Manga uh, Studio 5. Uh, this all linked in and then some cool tones thrown on it. He's like, I don't like the helmet and I don't like the eyeball showing up. And you know, as a concept artist, freelance artist, if this is what you want to do, you need to please a client. <clears throat> so I said, okay, more humanoid, no helmet. So I threw him this guy here. He's like closer, but uh, I'm not really for sure yet. So uh, then they came up with these little guys here. And number four, honestly, was this He's, a, he's an orc. I'm not going to lie. He's an orc with a flat face. That's what he's like. Orc, vampire, and some Asian guy with no eyes. I'm like, pretty much hit the nail on the head. But he, he settled for this demon right here. Uh, this will be the demon of despair. And this was about a day and a half to two days worth of work. But I wanted to show you all this. This is what concept phases are to explore and, and try new innovative things and stretch out ideas. I even push this guy, and I won't bring it up right now even further, because um, I love this headshot, I love the, the body, but then I had to sort out what the front of the face is going to look like. And we changed uh, the face around a bit, and we gave him robes instead of just like the, the skirts. And in, and in Ireland we call them dress kilts. Nah, 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 nah. Are you laughing with me, Sid, or laughing at me? At. Mm. Alright, why don't you go ahead and bring all the art team in here, butthead. Who's technically all the art team? Uh, we'll bring the, the leads. Bring uh, Mr. Steve Curtis. Got Steve, and, uh, got Wolf, got cats and Ray. Kittens. Do Did you say I eat kittens? Yes, Derek, I eat kittens on a daily basis. <laughs> They're full of vitamin T. Wait, that's tequila. <laughs> All right. We can trade recipes, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so much eat kittens, but uh, I, I do like to juggle occasionally. One actually landed on the ground the other day and it was terrible. He just lay there and he was all catatonic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Woo, I know. Any more than it would be a ca catastrophe. But seriously, we need to move on. King of puns. Yes. Oh. All right. So, um, Mr. Uh, Steve Kurtz, I know you've been very busy with all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, do you want to go ahead and lead with uh, your your environment art team, or do you want us to start leading with uh, what we're doing with uh, you know the character designs and stuff? Do I have an environment art team? Does anybody do environment? <laughs> art team? I I have thought about environment stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine start. I uh, I was actually thinking that uh, for the humans that. Um, they could have 
their forms could be in kind of human esque think, looking. Think no, 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 no very funny. Uh, think like uh, I would never s s make a joke, make a light out of something. No, okay. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, you know the how the old uh, art for like moon based stuff or maybe Martian base where they have the big dome. So I mean, obviously that's because they couldn't breathe without it. So, but they have the big glass dome thing. Well, I, w I was thinking they could do a similar thing uh, for their farms, so that the farms would all be um, inside. And I was thinking. Uh, for a couple of reasons, I mean, I I think uh, maybe they don't they don't want to uh, uh, like contaminate uh, uh, Alethea with their own crops and stuff and bugs and all that. You know, that's also, a really good. So I don't want to mean to stop you, but I am just for a second. That's a really good point that you know we kind of need to explore. I know it is it's a game, and that's all good, but. Everything we've done so far is based in facts uh, or on very close hypothesis and theories. I think that might be a good idea to be totally justified that we don't want to, uh, I guess, introduce our indigenous life forms to them and them to us. Right. And if, because it, and if it happens, it might be really cool. Yeah. On the on the flip side, too, uh, our we don't. We don't. Uh, I mean, their insects might tear our crops apart. We won't know how to like uh, cope with that. But I mean, I, I think also the Lethians might uh, not be happy. We Similar. might kind of have. So it's kind of like human environments uh, inside the alien world, but protected. Anyway, that's my environment idea. Well, Derek either just drew your dome or a turtle. <laughs> uh, Derek's computer is lagging very much badly, so I'm going to shut some stuff down. Please. All right. Well, um, all right. That is a really good idea. I hadn't even thought about that. I'm going to play around with that a bit, and certainly you can too if you got time, Wolf. But I know you're busy. Yeah. Booking stuff. That'd be cool. If I can find time. Books. Did if you want to grab my screen, I got a couple. Yeah. The show, and then we can go. I've got Sydney's stuff for characters, so we can just roll right into that. Let's do that, and I'll shut some of my stuff down. If you can take uh, Mr. Steve Curtis's screen, thank you, Sid. Already in the process. You're awesome. Thank you. That's right. Oh my gosh, that is awesome, Steve. I'm playing around with some modeling. I'm trying to get some fairly low poly meshes that are um, modular put together. And uh, remembering how to run 3ds Max because it's been a little while. So yeah, that makes me think of uh, in Battlestar Galactica, at least the, uh, the I new one. I sent a copy of this to a buddy of mine. He's like, "Can I fly my Viper down that?" So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, Which is uh, a cool thing. And I was also playing around with some textures. This is a single polygon. Everything's done with texture and normal maps. So. So that's the kind of stuff I'm playing around with for the human bases. And whee, now we can run around. I'm also a UDK guy, so I was uh, kind of teaching myself Unity. Great work. Sorry for the dead air. I'm drawing as you guys are going on and testing no stuff out. So that was the stuff I was fiddling with this week. Uh, How about the weather environments? Uh, I'm thinking about, okay, does it rain? Obviously it rains because we have some water environments. But could we have uh, some areas, and again, this is probably a question for Nelson and the guys, but where it's just strong to lightning, so we have some cool buildings that have lightning spheres on it that, you know, like in World of Warcraft, they have an area where it's, this, it's thundering and it's lightning and it's really cool. It's spooky environments because we could do a lot of cool visuals with that. I mean, the lightning doesn't have to really affect anything. Yeah, can you do it in Unity? Absolutely. Um, you can do it in any game engine. 
Uh, I don't know how much goes into it or how bad a draw it is on the engine or anything like that in terms of our team, but yeah, you can do it. You can do any kind of environmental effects, fog, haze, lightning, rain. Um, when we get that far, we'll have to talk to them if we do want to have rain on some levels, how they want to do that. It's, some methods are extremely uh, power intensive and some aren't. And you know, the other thing, talking about environments and stuff, uh, night and day cycles. Well, we have two suns. Would it be cool that it never gets dark there, or would that just get annoying? It would get annoying. Yeah, that would get annoying. There's too much cool things you can do at night. You know. Yeah, true. True that. Because, you know, we can have dark environments if it never gets dark at night, and we're going to the basis of chloroform, not chloroform, you know, the plant stuff. What is it called? Chlorophyll. Yeah, chlorophyll. chlorophyll. There you go. It's a chlor or something or another. We could have huge, huge canopies and justify it because the trees would just grow all the time. And then you'd have a little darkness under there. Just, just a thought. Well, I mean, if, if you do do a day-night cycle, the one advantage you get uh, is for the cost of setting up the cycle, you've essentially doubled your map space. Very true. Because the map is different at night in terms of how it looks, so you're, you're getting double the map space and playability. Then I say we have a day-night cycle then. I suppose you could, you could do something where uh, the, the kind of an irregular pattern to the, um, to the sun, so like sometimes you don't get a, a, a day or night cycle and sometimes you do depending like the suns are together or the suns are yeah, apart. if you have two suns, you could have a, a fairly erratic uh, weather patterns, uh, tidal patterns, um, and uh, and the day and night cycles. Uh, it could be about as as erratic as you wanted it to be. All right, that's some good ideas. I like that. Steve, you're doing great, man. Uh, any feedback from anybody? Awesome. Besides, you know. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Radical. That's that's why I made it because it was cool. <laughs> well, uh, it, and the next step would be to get some of those panels integrated in into the Unity corridor and see how that works. Are you? Uh, is this a uh, like a military base or? Yeah, something like that. Um, Ray, what do you mean? Get it into Unity? Well, you just showed us a minute ago Unity, and you were actually moving through this uh, corridor. Yeah. So uh, could you snap some Bunker. of your, your panels that you did with the normal maps onto the walls in this corridor? Oh, um, I had kind of built those for single polygon stuff, for just one big flat polygon. I, uh, As you can see on here, I got a base metal texture, but I haven't even pulled my UV mapping off the texture mm. yet. So I am planning on doing a separate texture for this. I just didn't have time before class to get it done. But yeah, I will completely texture it up. Well, it's just that I have uh, seen uh, really wonderful low poly stuff in Unity using the technique that you had and where like the uh, one line of, uh, of polys with just those, so it, you know, it's just a, a, a single uh, panel, but it looks like it has all kinds of neat stuff on it. Absolutely, yeah. I um, hopefully we can use both techniques just so we can break things up a little bit. Um, these are very. I, I think it's. Uh, oh, I want to say about forty polygons for a panel, so it is still extremely low poly, even with some detail in it. Okay. It's not one, but one is pretty low. Are, are we boring you, Sydney? Uh, I think that was Eve. Oh, are we boring you, Eve? <laughs> no. Oh. I'm actually oh. unmuted? Yes. Yes, you are. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even realize it. <laughs> well, it could have been, it could have been worse. You could have said yeah. something a lot worse. I'll play around with a few different things. I liked the idea of having some curvature to the wall. 
rather than just having big square corridors, which is kind of what you'd be stuck with with a single poly. So well, I've seen, I've seen plates like you had as the floor, for example. Oh, yeah, the floor. Well, I mean, I've kind of got the floors built in. This is, uh, where I'm at right here comes up and around to here, and it's a single modular piece. You can just duplicate it and flip it and run it any direction you want. Um, but, yeah, hopefully by next week I'll have some of this textured up and I'll play around with some other low poly stuff and uh, see if we start uh, fleshing out what these things look like. Good. You're doing really great, Mr. Steve. You are awesome. Thank you. Well, I don't know about that, but it's just so nice to see 3D. I, I really kind of miss doing 3D work, so uh, I'll be brushing up on it as well. And I will be taking your class. It class is. is. It is cool just to do this, isn't it? It is, because, you know, it takes forever to be able to draw all those different angles. <laughs> yeah, so now I can just screenshot them. Yeah, true. Unless you got Manga Studio 5, then your, your speed goes up quite a bit, but not nearly as fast as you're doing right now. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> not showing off. It's just fun. <laughs> it is fun. Eve, how are you doing tonight, girl, or this morning? Um... Great. I just got um, back from work at midnight, so basically I had three hours <coughs> left to get some uh, work done. Well, if it's okay with Mr. Steve, unless you have more to show, let's take Eve's screen real quick. Uh, I want to see what she's done, because I know she didn't, she'll need sleep. And I don't want to keep her yeah, that's sleep. Fine. I've got Sid stuff, but we can come back to it. Let's go, we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, Miss Sid, Miss Pinkalicious, can you take my Lipschen screen, bitte? Happening. Danke, danke. You're welcome. For this stuff. Sure, That's me there. I'm fine. Desktop. Yeah. She does have great screens, doesn't she? Everything in game um, from Final Fantasy. Basically, um, those are just some sketches again for um, a comic book. It's nice. Uh, I, I love the band aid on the face. I'm, Chicks with eye patches and maybe a band-aid. It sounds like I like my women beat up. It's not the case. It, just, it means they're tough and cool. Uh, basically, that one really reminds me of like a kid from Borderlands. Yeah, it does. I love the little highlight on the nose that she put there. Really, really, mm -hmm. it's subtle but it's very powerful. Um, because Ray said that uh, she probably is military, so um, I thought about. Uh, well, civilian or some kind of maybe technician, as a teenager, something like that. Uh, mechanic, that's uh, with the steampunk goggles and uh, those uh, kind of baggy pants. Like it's uh, stuff that it's actually for grown, uh, a grown adult, male, for example. And she's just, well, um, wearing it, it's too big. and um, yeah, it, uh, it kind of evolved from some uh, some people I saw on the metro uh, the other day um, that had really those kind of baggy, um, uh, uh, how is it called, yes. shirts. I oh, okay. This one, um, no, no, really those kind of sh uh, shirt. I, I saw one girl having actually this kind of um, cotton uh, skirt-like shirt and. Uh, her bikini top uh, because she uh, apparently came from uh, from the uh, beach or some kind of uh, swimming event that was uh, in the city, and I kind of like really liked her her top, so um, I incorporated it and played around with it a bit. Is it a poncho? Is that the word you're looking for? No, no, it's, it's it was really kind of a mix between a long shirt, a sleeveless shirt, and uh, a uh, a dress with really long um, here has called for for the sleeves. It was sleeveless, and it was really low cut, so you could basically see um, the bathing suit under it. Oh, they're and called tresses. Tresses. I'm making that word up. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Basically, it was um, some idea for the comic books, um, and I've been keeping at it for possible um, uh, for the uh, uh, human 
uh, comic book stuff, um, like she, um, the scene, how she would get the, the crystal. <clears throat> I Just, love how you're pushing manga. I mean, that's really nice. I uh, that's just basically some sketches. I would uh, later copy it into uh, Photoshop, but it's for me it's like e easier to to do the stuff really quick um, and have kind of my sketches and the uh, proportion. Uh, for example, here with um, the distortion of the face, I basically drew a box. Uh, with the perspective in it to get the face right and it's just for me it's quicker because I know it and uh, I'm going would alter it later on to right. look more um, American uh, comics comic book style but yeah just for uh, for the workflow I, I mean I did all of those uh, sketches um, and basically, I, I did it twice because um, they were all in blue and red, really rough sketches, and now they're semi-rough in about three hours. Not so bad at all, girl. So yeah. those those two things. Uh, After I, you, yeah. Uh, are you familiar with Tank Girl, the comic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's the vibe you're heading for, and I love yeah. it. That's one of my Me too. Movies. And and it's exactly the same kind of thing. This little girl is on living on the edge of things. She's in the outcast area. Uh, the uh, the rich people are controlling the people that where you you can get protected from the radiation. She's. Uh, you get, the, the tank girl vibe for me uh, is exactly right for this this young woman. I love Tank Girl, except Ice Ice T really a, a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> that blew me away. But I, I do I I love the art style. That little band aid's the first thing I thought of. Uh, Tank Girl, very fashionable with all her band aids. You mean the uh, this one, yeah? Yep. yep. And uh, yeah. And again, since it's an MMO uh, concept art class, uh, tell me if you think what I'm saying is full of poop or if it's true. When I work with my sketches, I like to start out really small, like you, you apparently do, and get my proportions down, and then just control T it to you know make it bigger, then throw another layer on top. And it, it's easier and faster for me to work small like that. Sometimes, but in my paint, I don't have that luxury. I just know that uh, here, if I start out, I basically already started out big because. Um, when you get up close, you don't see it uh, pixelate in any way. It right. just looks small, but like I said, once said, you can zoom out how far you want, and you don't have really any control of uh, the um, the size of your canvas directly. So uh, when I, for example, it starts out uh, this close. Let's see something in comparison. There it is. For example, this close, and I don't I don't see anything. And I think the elf I did for uh, for the fantasy class, uh, you see, it's pixelated when I try to scale it to the orc to get it on one page, because I b did both in uh, my paint, but I for the first one, I didn't have any uh, possibility to see the resolution, and it got really pixelated. So those are actually really high. Uh, but yeah, d due to uh, the zoom, I just make the pen uh, or the brush bigger, and it's like I work small. I have the same effect uh, like on paper or like uh, on uh, on low res, but uh, yeah, and there's still lower res than the uh, than the sketches of the um, for the character designs because I don't want my laptop to crash on me. Yeah, I thought I had a beast until I had like all these programs opened at once. <laughs> Manga Studio Pro and or, I'm sorry, Manga Studio Five and Photoshop and Pandora's Radio and it's starting to take a toll on my machine. So I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, well, but it, it's it's a good. Let's say it's a really good machine. I usually can have Photoshop and uh, my Paint uh, and everything open, but 
I know I did once uh, a color, uh, color uh, picture during uh, a class of yours. I think it was even a uh, drawing 101 or something like that. And yeah, I didn't know that the canvas was too big and uh, yeah, it all crashed, crashed on, on me. And that's saying something when basically I uh, can work simultaneously on two or two, three different uh, painting programs, no problem. Yeah. So th th that's a tr that's a tricky part with with the with the pro uh, with this program that you never know how big it actually is until you, uh, for example, save it as a PNG, and then uh, in some cases I had some pictures for for MMO concept that are nine megabytes big. Wow. So yeah, but like I uh, said, they have really nice brushes and yeah, you can zoom out and work. Like you would work, uh, like like you w would have have a small resolution and then copy it to Photoshop and uh, scale it down, and the lines get uh, tighter and it's clearer to uh, do then uh, the clean clean lines yep. from it. And uh, because we did our, and I, you were my last uh, fantasy art class of the Orc, right? Mm -hmm. we, we we did the body really nice and loose and big. And we really went and tight to that face, uh, really close up. And it's the same thing when you zoom back; it hides all the the small imperfections. So I guess there's a method of madness working both both sets. I would draw small, then come in really big. And anyway, well done. I'm proud of you. I, I love your thought process, and I agree with Ray. I love the Tank Girl vibe. Uh, Ray, I thought maybe because uh, she's not a lithium, um that basically I have kind of a movie in my head and that's why I bas wanted to put the scene on paper before maybe anyone else get a chance so I could show it and um, uh, but because she's not a lithium, that maybe the sk skin or something like um, around the crystal would kind of melt or melt onto it to kind of have this bonding effect. Well, no, but this, this is going to be an earth crystal. Oh. oh. The Alethians didn't take all of the, they didn't get every single shred of the earth silicon. Some pieces were left. And the Philosopher's Stone of Legend, which was a big deal in um, toward the end of Harry Potter, and that is a real legend. And yeah, gives you long life and transmutes lead into gold and all kinds of neat stuff. In, in my concept of the story, that was one of the few pieces of the earth living silicon that they, the Alethians didn't take, uh, and that that's what the the girl is going to get. She's going to get a piece of the just one of the very few pieces uh. of living crystal that are left on Earth from her. Yeah, but uh, didn't you say that basically uh, not uh, no human is actually able to bond with those crystals? Well, in the story on Alethea, when it happened, it was it, it happened almost by accident, and the girl who was the first to bond uh, found ways to help other people bond, but there. Were, in the story, there are very few people that on Alethea that can naturally bond without some kind of help. And I think the same thing would be true on Earth. And on Earth, prior to the Alethians showing up, you had never had that lucky accident where one of the humans who was capable of bonding was in the right place at the right time with the right kind of uh, Earth stone to bond. And so, by uh, happenstance, well, it's not so much happenstance. The, the concept on Earth is that these people have kept alive the, the legends, and they've tried to sort fact from fantasy, and they, they believe that they can find a human who can bond and that they can give humans what the Alethians had, you have know, legend. And they succeed with this girl. They're out looking and probably using uh, the crystal itself 
to try to uh, see if it responds in any way to people as they go by. And it gives them some kind of a signal that this little girl may indeed, little, she's a teenager, may indeed be able to bond, and in fact she does. But it's not an lithium crystal, it's an earth crystal. Yeah, but that I just, uh, um, yeah, I, I thought so, I just thought because well, humans don't uh, usually bond uh, with those, but uh, aside from that, uh, the idea with those, I don't know if I can explain it right, like when the crystal comes near, it touches the, the, the skin, that the skin is kind of like molten or it's grabbing the crystal, like if you can imagine that, that it's uh, for for the bonding process, then later on you wouldn't see that because it, the bonding is complete. But it's like it's grabbing and it's attaching itself, the skin to the to the crystal. Ah, uh, I get it. Oh, sure, yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, that works. So you're okay. saying that just the process of bonding, the skin gets all stretched. Yeah, it's like like uh, for example, if it's it was kind of gooey or something like like it's. I don't want to say sentient, but the the area where the crystal was, would go, that the skin would actually kind of go over, overlap over the crystal, like it's grabbing it. And uh, uh, like for example, if you would take the crystal and jam it into jello, try to to uh, push it into something soft, and the uh, material would wrap around it and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, depending on the density, gra uh, go around the crystal and kind of um, yeah uh, swap do, over it. Do you mean like the sides or or completely, like it's completely covered? And it's going to go, go, it's going to go, it's going to go back. So basically, it would be would be the same crystal like uh, like Sincha has, but uh, like really. Uh, imagine maybe little tiny hands, like it's gr the the skin, like hands. It's grabbing this, this crystal, like it's it's kind of sentient. It's 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 so soft. It's kind of webbed. It, it's it's it, like it's not uh, it's not completely uniform. It and it's it's the skin stretches out in some areas and some of it. Uh, you mean like little tendrils? Yeah. Yeah, like like maybe tendrils. Like it's getting close, and the skin, or like like tendrils, would go and grab it and wrap it and uh, pull it closer to uh, to bond to bond actually with uh, with a person. And well, it's, it is going to bond with her nervous system, so that makes sense. So ba after it, you wouldn't see uh, this anymore. But uh, for a nice effect, for example, if we ever get to make maybe uh, do some cut scenes or something like that that it's really kind of lapping over and gr actually kind of grabbing onto onto her or um in that case the skin is grabbing the crystal to uh, to attach it to itself yeah that's cool very okay. good i like your thought process well done miss eve very proud of you thank you Quite welcome. Uh, we got some some major ideas. We'll, we'll go with that in this, this second hour. But uh, does any, do you have anything else? Um, just one actually really lazy uh, cowboy, cowgirl. Uh, actually, I was also looking at I don't know uh, how you call them in America, but in Europe, there's called Marshall Brave Star. Also, Lou Shermer uh, cartoon, the same guy who did Masters of the Universe. There was this one um, cowboy judge in it. I know she doesn't look anything like it. I just took uh, kind of parts and ideas from it, but I, I'm not really happy. I like the chaps, but I mean, I'm a guy. <laughs> That's kind of, uh, yeah, cowgirl is kind of tough. At least cyber, um, cyberpunk or steampunk, it's it's easier. But well, I think well I, I I've seen your uh, your uh, concept for cowboy, and I think we met, uh, seen the same cartoon as inspiration. Cool. I, I, again, I'm drawing a lot from Galaxy Rangers, uh, from the Metal Horses, and we'll get to mine here in a little bit. 
Miss Eve, well done. I, again, I love your, your thought process. You're very articulate, and you can do it in many languages. So keep up the good work. We're, I'm glad that you're here. I like her boots. Her she boots. said boots. I, I know. <laughs> I, I like it's just in my lip. I have, a big note, I have a big note right in front of me that says, watch your mouth. So I'm like, mm. yeah. uh, Last Last week, uh, I actually uh, did those uniforms. I know you uh, you like breasts, so I uh, make, made the neckline plunge deeper than usual. Well, I, I can say thank you. And that's <laughs> nothing bad. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Because, you know, it could be hot. So, I mean, you know, and all sweaty stuff. You need, you need, you need that sort of thing. That's all I got to say. I'm going to shut up now. Looking hey. at my note. Yeah. Oh. That's basically oh, yeah. from last week. That. That's. I think yeah. I sh I've shown. I haven't finished it. Uh, the hand is still missing. But yeah, it was kind of uh, with Derek in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not hopeless. I can always be used as a bad example. <laughs> What, is it the belt? Is it the belt is what you thought, Derek? My like? No, ba basically the neckline. He's being a, no. he's being oh. a smart aleck. Oh, okay. it, it helps this, focus, this part. It helps focus attention on the uh, the the, the uh, stone. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Ray. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. There's a stone there. Uh. <laughs> down, boy. Down. <Yeah. laughs> I I really like how what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're gonna push me to do even more. So. Uh, well done. well done. Hey, hey, Derek, can uh, can I show the page, the little I've done on page five thing? That'd be great. Can you uh, take Mr. Wolf's screen? Eve, well done, girl. No, never. Well, never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Eve is still here. Yeah. She's not going away. She's like a plague. Wow! Look at that. I'm not completely sure how I, what I think of all of it, but uh, as far as color was, but I love the transparency look that you got going on with the yeah. statue. Yeah, I really like uh, that as well. Not really a statue anymore, but yeah. <laughs> what I would well, we were suggest. Thinking hologram. Kind of. Yeah, hologram. I'm sorry, my bad. Is if you could throw it like three sections of different blurs. You know how some holograms have that scramble effect in it. If you put three layers of blur in there, you know, so one the middle part might be even more blurred than the face, and that might be kind of a cool look. The middle part might be more blurry than the face. Yeah. You know, you've seen the, like, the holograms start to break right. up where they're, they're forming or something like that. Uh, right. You don't have to do that. I really like right. what's going on. I love the shape, the crystals. Uh, and Again, we can just go over and over about what Sid did with the, the emotion. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, uh, it's not actually a hologram. You know, it's, it's some magic thing, so I don't ah. know if that's necessarily appropriate. Like, that might be better for the, the human hologram things to kind of... You know, if they look too similar, I might, you know. Very good point, Mr. Wolf. Well but I, I don't really know. It, it, it depends on what people no, think. No, that's, I, I that's a very way. rational, rational thought, and that's good. Uh, devils in the details and small things like this will add up, and hopefully we'll get a lot of hardcore players that will notice these things. So, well done. And and uh, thinking of even mind, I, I did skin color I thought she would like there <laughs> there and there yeah, it's it's Not nice gray. <laughs> thanks you're welcome does that chick have a mustache panel too what? or those cheekbones oh. I think it's cheek okay <laughs> I am French <laughs> You can see that, that she has the same cheekbones uh, where she's looking at the statue. True, true that. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I just like, what is that? Is it is the Mask of Zorro? <laughs> Which that's Spanish or Mexican, not French. Okay, I digress. Keep me on track. What What are you thinking of the uh, of the colors? I don't know if it's too noisy or. What you know? It's like I, I I don't know. Also, if things like this red clashes with that red, but I mean, it's like people don't usually. Uh, 
in, in that kind of a way, you know, so it's like, I mean, it's either everything's going to be like the same kind of red or you're going to have diversity. So, I mean, I don't. Your thoughts, anybody? I, I think I, it might be a little busy, but like, it's not, I don't, uh, it's not bad, but like maybe it should be a little desaturated, maybe? I'm not sure. Say those poles, are they supposed to be maybe round? Because uh, if you put some shadows in those... Oh, I will. I, I, I just started on the shadows. I've only started... Yeah, but uh, they could be, for example, they could just be planks, and then you wouldn't have actual shadows on them. And if they're round, uh, you can have shadows um, on those red... Uh, on this fence, and it might take some of the busyness out of right. uh, out of it. Because I I, I I might have overcompensated for some of the coloring things, I think. <laughs> but I don't know. And again, when Wolf first started on my page, he showed it to me I'm like, well, that's really good, but things look flat. I wonder if he's going to put shadows in it. And he did. I mean, again, going back to the business, you have people called flatteners. And that's a job where you just put flat colors in. You pass it off to the other guy, and they'll put the highlights and shadows in. And poor Wolf's doing it all by himself. So I'm, I have every confidence in you, Mr. Wolf. I don't care what Steve says. <laughs> <laughs> so well done. I like it. I also, I didn't, Ray, I didn't know if this is supposed to be purple or not. Or I think it, uh, yeah, it is. It is, right. I know it is. <laughs> Could be or maybe not. She's uh, a legend at this point, and they may not even know that uh, her her stone is like Cinch's. They, they may that may be buried in the mist of of, uh, of, of the past. Because you got to remember, this would be six or seven thousand years after that. Um, okay. Yeah. That's that's if if you're if you're thinking that they created this. I was I was thinking that this is more like a like a, a their version of a photograph. No, I'm uh, I'm thinking like it's something, something that they created. It's an idealized version. Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, I guess I, I I probably should uh, change the color. But I was thinking for the reader, they could go, huh? Maybe, but they're probably not. I mean, it is kind of tiny. Well, in the second book, if we get to there, she's going to meet one of the, uh, like, number six or number seven of the people that, that was passed on to, and that one will indeed have a stone that matches hers. This is going to be an old woman. She's going to be a thousand years old and about ready to die. That's a pretty old woman. Yeah. I thought pushing 42 was bad, but a thousand years old? Man, I hate to get up in the morning like that. That would. Uh... I I heard I heard <laughs> the old woman part. I my sound went out for a bit. It keeps doing that. But anyway. <clears throat> I was just being a smart aleck. You didn't miss much. Okay. Uh, well done. Uh, did you have any art to show tonight, Mr. Wolf? Um. No, I was I was thinking though. Uh, you were talking about. Uh, 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 kind of a ca uniforms and kind of a cowboy, and it's not really a cowboy, but I was thinking this there's like I was thinking something, something I like a little bit like like that like that their their uniforms are kind of interesting for metal alchemist yeah, and it, it's like they they wear these like coats over them and so uh i I was kind of thinking like uh as far as as far as those um, uh, kind of cow the cowboy look, I I don't think that, that uh, things need to be all brown and and stuff kind of you know. No, I agree totally with that. Because, totally with because that. because we have better dyes now and and we also have better material. But I mean, I think there's kind of a style. But I think kind of a also you know I mean depending on who who has it. But a nicer thing, and I mean nicer quality, uh, uh, 
stuff that just kind of resembles it in a way and then and then have you know different colors like um, I would totally agree I mean I love the whole firefly aspect of it but I, I I'm not saying those guys are poor but I mean they're always scrounging and right. uh, I really believe that we can get away with from all the browns and the dust I love I kind of like the style to explore and that's that's what we're doing this week or doing sorry proper Queen's English doing this week no, I, I like your I, thought I, process I kind of like I like uh, blue like this, uh, and um, and it also has a you know the yellow design color. But uh, at, for like a uniform, uh, at least a dress uniform, and then you know maybe um, they could still have camouflage type stuff if we want to go that route. But uh, but instead of uh, like today. Uh, uh, nowadays, every all the uniforms are um, camouflage and stuff. Well, we can also go to the aspect where I, I really like some of the cowboy things, but uh, I'm also seeing a lot of Firefly where you have settlers coming in, and you know they're they're not military. I don't want them to make them look like military, and maybe this is the style that that's bigger going on right now for civilians. And we can continue to design military uniforms and stuff like that. And I think we'll just give another you know layer of, of semi-realism and choices for players. So well done. And with that, we're at the top of the hour. So uh, Miss Sid, how's the storm doing there? Everything still good to go? I can't see anything, but it sounds like it's calmed down. So. All right, good. For those who, uh, we, I, I've been noticing we have more and more people joining up, and that's awesome. Uh, we had some small technical difficulties. Mother Nature decided to storm really bad and throw some internet out. But uh, Miss Pinkalicious there says everything is good to go. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a, a five to, say, seven-minute break, uh, get your beverage, use the potty, whatever you've got to do, and then we're going to continue to explore. I've got some artwork. Uh, I know Sid's got some artwork, and then I have some ideas I want to throw out at everybody. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, take it out for a bit. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Here's truly Mr. Derek T. Stevens. I had to run outside. A squirrel got a hold of my slipper, and I had to chase him down. Uh, it's catch and release here. I did not eat him. Uh, that would be Mr. Steve Curtis who eats cats and critters like that. Uh, alongside of me is Miss Pinkalicious Sid Curtis, who is my handler tonight at the Buzz Cave, and we are now looking at some concept art of hers. Uh, we're kind of going for a cybernetic cowboy uh, feel this week, just trying to feel things out and throw out different ideas. Miss Sid, tell me, explain, Lucy, explain. What was your thought process? Um, steampunk and robots and cowboys and yeah. No, no, it's good. I love the goggles on top of the hat. That is beautiful. Well, I like how you added. Uh, yeah, that, I like that. You like how you added the purple color to the. Um, or duster sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. when it's a couple different <laughs> colors. You showed the good one before the bad one, dang it. <laughs> there are no bad ones. There are no bad ones. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's very sci fi. Little orange riding hood. <laughs> <laughs> I love the boot. Area the, the knees. The, yes. I'm assuming their knee pads are sort of like boots, but yeah, those it's, are cool. it's not a lot of detail, but it adds so much to the, the illustration. I don't know why, but I, I kind of uh, think that this um, ranger or something like that. Or maybe it's just because of this. I think more about the boots and the form is uh, this one right. game. I don't know if any of you heard about this big controversy about this one beat em up game with the sorcerers with the big boobs. And they have an elf that has basically not the same uh, outfit, but also the hoodie and the form and uh, the boots it kind of rem uh, remind me of it. So I, even though it's it's orange, I think of, of a ranger or a. So what's the controversy? Like There's this because they're very well endowed? Is that what's going on? Yeah, basically this, um, I think Dragon's Crown or something it's called, uh, it's a um, uh, Japanese beat em up game and yeah, uh, the the artist kind of satirizes uh, this uh, this whole kind of Boris Vallejo 
uh, style and the sorceress, the, the uh, black mage has really big boobs, the Amazon is I love of your accent. <laughs> uh, uh, she may uh, with really, really stone apps and stuff like that, but that's beside the point, it's just for the form and uh, yeah, even though it's orange, I kind of had to think about the, the cute little elf girl um, from the game. And it's so much what society we, we've looked at, because whenever I see a hood like that, I do too. I think of Dritz, uh, the drow with, uh, with the hood up and being a ranger. Uh, it's just, this is what society has bombarded us with for a long time. And yeah, she's kind of ranger-esque, but I, I like, I love the dress. Tanka, I, I don't know why, really but... I think you really nailed the 70s thing. What'd you say? I think you really nailed the 70s yeah. thing. Yeah. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. But, it's re I, I kind of get this feeling that she's wearing an apron, almost. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of got the feeling with the orange that she'd be someone working in, like, a lab or some sort of quarantine zone. I don't know, that's the vibe I got. I love your hands, too, by the way. I want to call attention to your hands. The gloves are beautiful, the fingers are sticking out. Really good form and all that, so well done. Uh, thank Manga Shop. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Manga Shop is all Manga Studio. See, you're messing up the name too. I, that's because you're contagious. I know, right? <laughs> Manga Pro Shop. <laughs> Manga Pro Shop. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Manga Studio Five. And no, we're not getting endorsed, but by God, we should be by now. So, uh, well done. Uh Derek, you know maybe uh, this, there's a kind nice trick in Manga Studio. Um, for example, uh, they allow you also to rotate your um, your tones. So basically, there are um, some tones because I think uh, they also use the deleter versions. It's a company that uh, in Japan that makes those tones usually used in Manga. And when you work with real tones, you can for, um, have sets in uh, the uh, uh, in, how do you call it? Uh, for example, if you take a gray tone with, this, with, the, with those dots, you have the angle and the percentage, oh, yeah. how, many, uh, how many dots are uh, on the sheet. And if you uh, turn it, for example, for 45 uh, degrees or something, it also always depends on the tone uh, right. underneath. Uh, you can uh, do g really great um, shadows and gradients because uh, basically uh, those tones double then and It's almost like uh, cross, cross yeah, almost yeah, like they, cross Because I, 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 um, I, all the pictures I've seen uh, you did basically just one tone and you can ba uh, work with two or three tone, layer tones uh, in that way and have really great effect uh, for shadows. So. There's a couple I'll show you later on. I want to saturate with all the uh, all the other stuff I'm doing, but I, I'm definitely exploring that. So I love the whole Manga Studio 5 thing just because it, it's powerful. I'm not taking anything away from Photoshop, uh, but I will continue to learn that as this other work and other stuff has gotten in the way this week. It's been a busy, crazy week, but I, I agree with you. Very, very uh, powerful. I'm not crazy about that orange with the red and stuff. I think uh, you could probably find a, a better color to go with. Uh, Listen to you, Mr. Colorist. It's brag on the color. Says I do color. Well, well, I really, I really like the everything else. Is got a, I like the the red with the brownish thing or whatever it is. Uh, so that all looks good. But I mean, it, it it's not. I ju I just think it could look. Better I don't know. I kind of pictured with um, it being a whole new planet, not everybody's doing well, radiation, blah, blah. The clothes are going to be kind of weird because it's futuristic and we want a certain style, but I picture with even just steampunk and futuristic things, some things are going to be a little off color-wise. And I didn't want it to be too much contrast with the orange, but I don't know. So, so like, like maybe, maybe it's not so much an a whole outfit, but she's like wearing something over her normal outfit, that kind of thing. Um, just the cook. Maybe just like the colors configured wouldn't be perfect. 
No, I, I kind of like that idea. And again, we can explore different color palettes and tones, but overall, I like it. It's very, very futuristic, a sci-fi vibe. Definitely, you nailed it. Tonga. But uh, do you have any more to show us, girl? Uh, just that other one. That's it. The one I showed first. Yep, that's it. I like it. I like that funny a lot. Thing, funny thing is, the first, the first thing I kind of uh, popped into my uh, head, uh, not not a resemblance, but I really like the um, the glove because of the of yeah. those folds and uh, those. Uh, accessories or uh, stuff like that it's uh, on the front because it's really the th first thing that's more or less in the picture when you uh, picture her leaning uh, the hand is the f uh, uh, closest to the camera and that's the th first thing kind of that, uh, that uh, my eye went to I kind of really like the, uh, like the design of it. Danka, I spent a lot of time on this one. It's not finished. It's really but... cute. I'm 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 wondering if you could try uh, for the browns to to change them to another color, just uh, like pink. Just, I I don't I don't I don't know, but uh, just just to make it look a little bit less cowboy, you know. I mean I know it's supposed to look cowboy, but I don't know. My attempt to go away from that was kind of uh, the top hat and the goggles and like the pink right. and which, blue. Which, which you did, but it's it's still, I don't know. I mean, uh, that I just to, just to try, I yeah. think, just to see what happens. Then, you know, because it might set it more orange? apart. <laughs> <laughs> I would flip out, man. I, I think an orange vest like that and it says "Welcome to McDonald's" would be great. I, I, I'm gonna walk out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Wolf does not like orange. <laughs> Oranges for hair. All right. um, that's um, another thing for uh, Ray. I thought maybe that the uh, um, the human girl that's going to bond with a uh, with a stone, <clears throat> just uh, for the reader, so they see that there is a connection. I always kind of used orange to uh, draw another parallel to Cynthia. If that's you mean like anything. for the human's hair? Yeah, yeah. But every every design I did, I especially yeah, I see, I colored the hair uh, orange to um, yeah d uh, draw parallel to to the Ethiopian girl. Oh. I like that. Yeah. And again, it's the subtle things that are gonna add up to the big things. Mm -hmm. Devil is definitely in the details. So well done. All right, Miss Sid, go ahead and take my screen real quick. I suppose. Hey, uh, before you take my screen, I have an idea. We were talking about uh, the, the way that the stones were bonding to the humans and you know throwing some ideas. This is a quick idea, so don't be so judgmental. But I figured I would have Bondo. Get it, Bondo? That's me, Bondo. We just slap it on the collarbone, and poof, there you go. Really, not even a chuckle from anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I was off doing other stuff. What? <laughs> my my joke was I had an idea to, because we were having you know we were talking about how the lithium stone would bond to the or the human stone bond to the human. I'm like, well, let's have a big can of Bondo. Bondo. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, golly, man, tough audience. <laughs> tough okay. Do tough they room. even use Bondo anymore? <laughs> well, they will. Yeah, they will. That looks like a farm. It is. That's my idea of a farm. This, uh, I mean, again, I'm I'm not Steve Curtis by any means. I'm not a, a background guy. I, I will learn. Whatever. When he teaches. That's all good for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, my idea was I play a lot of. Um, Battlefield 3, and there's one level where you have these, like, I would assume, what I want to do is have water being irrigated from here to being pumped out where you can actually climb on and do stuff. We're talking about the dome here. 
And this big thing here would be like lightning sphere. So lightning would strike that and not the, the dome. It has some sort of water being pumped in through here. And there's some city landscape in the background with some red. But that's what I was thinking when, when Wolf was, was talking about it. And again, I, I have a lot to learn. I understand that when it comes to background. It's my first attempt to do sort of big brushy things. And I will get better, Mr. Steve, with your tools. Well done, sir. Well done. Really, really thank you. Because, man, yeah. it was so out of my, out of my comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. Cool. All right, hey. I like Although it does, it does kind of, I do like it, but it does make me think of uh, melting igloo. <laughs> Wolf, where do you live? Because <laughs> I'm going to spray paint my body from head to toe all orange. Come knocking on your door and throw kit. terrible. Have this cat, this cat, I think something ended up in his Cheerios today. I don't know. I know, right? What's up with that? It was an orange. Come on. <laughs> right. So uh, my concepts for uh, kind of the Clint Eastwood sort of look here. Let me bring it back a little bit more. Uh, again, just playing around the tones, but the cowboy look is a very okay. tight shirt. My turn. No neckerchiefs. What? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> But I it's like sandy. It. They're functional when you're out on your robotic horse on the prairie. Uh, you know, the sandstorm comes up. Yeah. And look, Steve, no booby tape. But you can still see the booby crease. <laughs> well, well, duh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, you know, At well, least it's not... Yeah? yeah? It's not, like, vulgar. It's just, you know... It's a tight shirt, or maybe a little moist because she's sweaty. Huh. I don't know. I'm not sure yeah, at least you didn't it. put uh, those beneath the breast, you know? Like uh, all the other superhero uh, comics that basically imply that uh, every um, every outfit is really skin tight and wraps around the uh, woman's breasts. How dare them? Yeah. How dare them, Zoic? Well, like starts. <laughs> I just, I just can't believe after 50 years of that, but they haven't actually started making those clothes. That was an epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, go to Walmart and look at the people around you. You may not want everyone wearing superhero clothes oh, like that. I agree. <laughs> All the wrong ones would wear them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm yeah, so you've been to Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At like day three, people don't shower or bathe and they. Smell like sweaty Mountain Dew. It's pretty scary. What I love is, uh, and this is, I, I get it back on track after this, but, you know, first day, some hot chicks running around in chain mill, and then second day, but day three or four, it doesn't matter which look like. You're like, I'm, you know, we don't drink alcohol here, but I have enough Mountain Dew in me. I'm pretty courageous. Let's sweat and put some of that stuff on. And then they take it off, and their legs look like they have waffles. That's all I have to say. <laughs> All right, going back to uh, the arts, <laughs> uh, I did want to give some sort of shoulder pad looking thing, right? Uh, I like the whole flap over uh, area we, you put it down here, a nice kind of utility belt. Uh, very plain and sleek, because what I was thinking, if the military is going nice and sleek, this could be part of the style here, too. It's simplified, it's utilitarian, and then my robotic horse that Wolf was making fun of up through here. Uh, this area through here, it's almost like uh, a second chance plate for the back and the front. That, that would just, it's basically a bulletproof vest. And you have the whole chap thing, and my handkerchief, and then my robotic horse. I just I just really dig robotic horses. I think that would be kind of cool. Bioshock Infinite had uh, really great ones um, uh, for, for the carriages in, uh, for the city in the sky. Those were really great designs. Cool. Eric, that is a really cool robotic horse. Yeah. But I cannot, I cannot suspend my disbelief far enough to believe that they would make that. <laughs> you know, that that was my first thought, but then, uh, you know, uh, wheels, wheels aren't necessary for a certain terrain. Wheels aren't very good. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but if you had a horse, what? They probably have something that covers. Yeah, this could be the cheap, poor man's version. Yeah. Uh, any of you know Saber Rider? Get tired, you know, if you have a good power, 
Uh, no, what, what is Saber Rider? Uh, that was an anime from early 80s, and uh, the, this kind of a Power Rangers type a team of uh, three or four people um, with a big robot, but the leader of the group had a, a mechanical horse, and the horse had basically some uh, jet packs, if you want to call it, uh, uh, in the hooves and uh, in the back, so it was also capable of interstellar uh, travel or something like that, so uh, it uh, doesn't have to be that it's uh, unpractical, they could uh, as well hover. Okay, Steve, well, see that, that pushes over the edge, interstellar travel on the horse, I, I can't go that far, but you know, frontier, hippity cloppin' and stuff, I think of it awesome. Well, you know, they've got that uh, military, uh, it's like a, almost like a d robot dog thing. I mean, it, it's not a, meant to be a dog, but it's like, yeah, mule or, you know, or I don't know. It, it, uh, it, it carries it, it stuff. Car it, carries, it carries your heavy stuff and it, it functions. And they, d they don't do wheels because wheels aren't a, as good and you can kick it and it stabilizes. and. Uh, so, so I, I, I can see, see that. Plus, I mean, if you want, if your commander is, has uh, spider uh, leg uh, implants, uh, you, you're going to want to keep up with them. If you're, uh, Can't you know, we just capture the sand button. penguins and use those? You can have robotic, robotic sand penguins. There, there we go. Interstellar, <laughs> interdimensional traveling sand penguins. The spatulas. See, see I, mean, I think this is a lot less ridiculous than the sand penguins as mounts. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, they, they seem fun going down the hills and stuff, but it's like, then waddle, 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 waddle. You know? Then why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they would be uh, bigger, so basically when they uh, start... They'd waddle faster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. if, if, for example, if you start on a, on a, a hilly top or something and they uh, go on their bellies so they have this uh, the speed and um, the, um, the weight so the, it would take them uh, further or they could use their fins to kind of uh, push themselves and if you absolutely can't afford to uh, get there uh, at the fast speed of the uh, waddling, uh, waddling sand pit winds. Then I, 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 w I would uh, suggest taking a, a speed snail mount. Ooh, I can't be late on my first day of class. <laughs> oh God. That's a. Don't see monsters, you never mind. Yes. <laughs> what? It's a funny monster? show. Mon monster, you. It's a new Pixar thing. Anyway, again, oh yeah, that thing. Getting way off topic. Uh, again, we were just kind of—I was trying to capture the feel of the cowboy. When the cowboy do there, I trying to model after the the young Clint Eastwood. You know, for the for the kept capturing the feel of the cowboy, I, you actually drew a cowboy. <laughs> you just don't like the neck thing. I would lean towards tone it back a bit or future it up a bit. I like the chick. I like the crossover shirt. That's really cool. Okay. I, yeah, like, I, I really like that idea. I do. I like her uh, as well. I, I feel like she should wear some kind of a, not, not a cape, but whatever, the duster thing, whatever, uh, kind of a, a cloak. No capes. Type thing. No capes. No, no, not a cape, cape, but like a cloak or something. Uh, I heard there's an orange one for sale. Like... Not, not with a, not even with a hood, but just kind of. Uh, if you remember the those pictures that I showed you, the Full Metal Alchemist thing, like they were. I think that would that would add a little something to it. Be cool, For, you know, and, and so you could see it. Um, is it like more so, uh, like to the lines between. Uh, her arms and where the hips are, you know, like to, to have a, a, a colored uh, cloak on the other side there. Um, I think that would look sharp. That makes sense. 
you can kind of go in for the old duster feel. And going back on what uh, Dad said about futuristic, I do think the whole space cowboy thing is fun and stuff, but I do also think it's kind of cheesy and overdone. Personally. Your dad paid you five bucks to say that, didn't he? He's nowhere near me. No, because I, I actually really like the space cowboy thing. <laughs> well, how about this? I do like... Because I agree with Mr. Ray, there's got to be like different class sort of citizens where you have, we'll do the really cool military look. But I really like the the Firefly aspect where you have these hodgepodge people running around, just like Eve showed uh, uh, with that girl with the baggy pants. Uh, but I think the key element to tie into everything is the cyberpunk stuff, not cyberpunk, the steampunk stuff. I got my little things in my head real quick. There. Now I'm ready for steampunk. I got my goggles. So, alright. Uh, we'll definitely have to revisit this because I vote for this guy over a penguin. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I think it'd be fun in a game to have a game within a game where you have penguin sliding races, you know, where you guys can make bets and throw anyway. That's another here, another. No snail mount. Is, yeah, but uh, it's, you don't have just to have one kind of mount. Right. Basically, you can have uh, different kinds of mounts and uh, just as a joke or stuff like that, you can have uh, domesticated sand penguins or, I don't know, <laughs> big uh, sand worms like in Dune or stuff like that. Why it's not? It's all about the penguins. Yeah. Why not? Uh, sand, <laughs> sand worms would be cool. They open your mouth, their mouth and you walk in there and they, they bore. Anyway, that's stupid and silly. I can't believe I said it. Is Ryan here? Let's get back on topic. Uh, I unmuted him a while back. Are you there, sir? Um, it looks like he might be gone. Yeah, I think he left. Poop on a cracker. I mean, don't really do that. It's bad. Try that. See, I, I, I like I like the idea of uh, being influenced uh, by the cowboy thing, but I I, I don't want it. I, I don't think it should go like uh, too literal because then it, it like it, it does seem a little odd and like you know I agree with Sydney what she said. Yeah, I do like it's having over, little overdone. bits and pieces of it, but I don't think we right. should go all the way full on. The horse is what killed it, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, it's, it's like well, you might as well have have like uh, 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 you know medieval style knights. You know? Riding around. I was just thinking Firefly. It's okay. We, we, we can explore other avenues. And I'm glad we still got to do this because this is what concept is, exploring different no, things. I, I love the Firefly look, but at the same time, it's like they already did it. And so it's like, do we want to be like, yeah, you hey, know what? We, we can do it for Firefly. We can do, we can do it for more than one season, okay? That's what I have to say. <laughs> uh, can I show you guys something real quick? Um, Please do. Okay. I really had kind of a hard time to find it. Um, yeah, uh, it's about this the jetpacks and uh, I <laughs> finally found a picture. And yes, it uh, was actually broadcast in America, so it. But it's really, really old. See, Steve, it can happen. Horses can fly. Yeah. Derek, what you're saying, that you you cut out for well, me when you're like saying we could do. Really going to make Nelson happy if you have. A horse in the game. Oh God, no, yeah. no, no! <laughs> a pony, flying yes. space pony. You don't say that. <laughs> it's awesome. Nelson would so get on I the am ball surrounded by so many ponies right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was saying is, we could do it right. We could do more than just one season, like Firefly, because they were only around for one. 
I was so mad. I was watching the show and like the season was over, and I kept looking everywhere. We're season two. We're season two. Well, I think I think one thing you know they definitely went for a lot of the Browns and stuff. So if if we had the same kind of or similar kind of outfits, but with uh, different, different colors. colors and stuff, you know, maybe a little more sophisticated in design, so it doesn't look as old timey. So it looks like a new take on a the old. Uh, concept, you know, using uh, just uh, modern uh, uh, technology and uh, or future technology, um, possibly, uh, in um, uh, making garments and stuff. That I think that it could be uh, you could have something neat there. But I mean, it's like I think there's also two different kinds of outfits. There's outfits that you would uh, Use in town, and it, and there's outfits that you would go adventuring in, and, and the outfits you go adventuring in, it, you would want to be more sturdy. So you well, would see, that's, want that's leather and stuff. Because we're, essentially, we're designing a game. Now, I was a role-playing freak. I loved to role-play, and my, my people had like in like you said, in-town outfits. But not everyone's going to be that that picky. They're going to want their stuff to look cool, and big, and yeah. bad. Right. Right, I I don't I didn't mean that you would actually change your character in and out, but I mean there there are going to be NPCs of the town who who would be wearing different stuff. And... True that, very good point. Yeah. Right, does, has anyone read uh, Ryan's, Ryan's post? What he's wanting us to do for uh, the Wikipedia thing? Because uh, uh, I've read I've read a lot of it. Uh, we're going to have to get Nelson, Nelson to do some coding and some stuff like that, and I won't ruin all his. Uh, I guess Thunder, you guys are more welcome to check that on 3D Buzz uh, the forums. It's up and running there. Ryan is on a phone call with his work. He's not sure how long it's going to take. All right. <clears throat> well, how about this? We let him do his work thing, and uh, I'll be quiet about the whole uh, Wicca, 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 Wack thing. Uh, and let's start talking to Mr. Eight. Again, since you're like the head writer here, what are you thinking about all the ideas, and how cool are horses compared to penguins? Hey, Sid, can you grab my screen quick? I might be able to. What, How bad do you want what it? About, uh, well, what about... Well, let Mr. Ray talk real quick, sir. Okay, okay. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't imagine either penguins or horses in um, on the Earth side. But, you know, what do I know? <laughs> or giant rabbits. There's your mechanical horse. Kind of see that. Hey, the Empire called. They want their speeder bike back. <laughs> well, you know that's that's <laughs> right the horse. The, the, the motorcycle, the hovering motorcycle, essentially. And I do like it. Is a wheeled horse. Except this one, we don't need wheels where we're going. Yeah. Now it... another thing, they were talking earlier about the fact that. Um, it is difficult to use wheels in very rugged terrain, which is why a lot of times they go with tracks. But some of the work that's being done uh, actually has more like insect legs, uh, six or eight, uh, which gives you that same stability and ability to uh, crawl around. They, though they don't normally think about using those uh, as mounts so much as mules to carry your gear. Right. No, I agree. So, uh, okay, cowboy idea, bad, somewhat of a cowboy thing, okay. He just made the Marlboro man roll over in his grave and cry, but that's all right. That's, that's what we're here for. That's what he gets for smoking Marlboros. I know, right? So it should have switched to camels. The, the, the hat, like right there, the hat is good because, uh, I mean, you think uh, this is, it's going to be, you know, you got two sons to contend with. You're going to be venturing around. You're going to go, hey, that's why people used to wear hats. Yeah, and it makes sense to have their goggles as well. Because, yeah, exactly. I love the shoulders on the cloak. Right the essentially uh, a high-tech duster, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Danga. 
I don't know why I like the jetted out shoulders. I think if you you took like some of this and then like the uh, the one Derek did, and there were like the armor shoulder pads under here. Ooh, nice. Some of those aspects that that would yank you out of pure cowboy. Maybe, maybe. I like that idea. If you took if you took the holster and the guns out of there, it's not cowboy. It's It's a little cowboy. it's maybe the same period, but that's not a cowboy. Get rid well, of but, yeah, but it's, it's a like cowgirl. Old West. No, it's not even a cowgirl. If you get rid of the holster and it's steampunk. And the holster, and yeah. just look at, it's more like a yeah. anchor or a doctor. Yeah, kind of Victorian. Yeah. Going back to steampunk. Mm. Except, except maybe uh, the, uh, the pants. Anyway, we had some really good ideas. Uh, we we messed around and mucked about uh, with, I guess, I guess, the officers and stuff. Is uh, Miguel here or Mr. Clinton here? Um, they are both unmuted. Hey guys. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? Doing pretty good. I keep wanting to see your names, and I just don't have that screen. How about you guys? Do you have some stuff you want to show tonight? No. What? <laughs> you feel like it's been a workhorse. It sounded no so pun sad. The horse thing. No, no, I know. It's been working on that uh, 3D printer thing. Ah. And he's. Uh, we were chatting in the uh, side here, and he's also going to come up with some writing, some kind of rune-like writing for the elite. Ooh, that is something we've been needing. I like to have one one symbol for Earth air, you know, all the elements. So we can definitely use that in uh, in the city, in the city landscape and tattoos. If you're like a water-based individual, then you're going to have that mark probably someplace on you to identify, you know. Again, we want to have a, a good read whenever we're, we're making our people run up and down and all around. So uh, what are you going to base it off, Mr. Clinton? Do you have any idea? Um, not entirely. Um... I just figure, or I'll just start doing some Google research and try and find something I like and some things I like and squish them together. See if they inspire something. Um, uh, you could look at uh, some. Uh, how is it called? Sanskrit. They mm-hmm. have uh, and um, it really um, more or less Chinese calligraphy because. Uh, the usual uh, Asian signs for earth, water, what have you, that I use, they're well, standardized, but there's um, a school uh, of calligraphy in China and also in other Asian uh, countries that basically if you don't know what what the guy wanted to write, you won't be able to uh, kind of guess because it's kind of an art form and they're always kind of I don't want to say disfigured, but uh, it's really abstract and, uh, and nice, and, and some, in some ways, really inspirational. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah. If you uh, if you Google, the Mayans also had symbols for all of those things. Mm-hmm. There's lots of inspiration out there. Especially since they, uh, the the were once on Earth. Uh, it uh, it would actually be logical to take um, some some old uh, something from an old culture and kind of switch it around or maybe make a mix of of um, some of uh, some of those uh, because they probably were around at that <laughs> time. I'm sorry, I'm cracking up. I'm looking at the screen. I love that game. He's called Dirk the Daring Dragon Slayer, the very first laser disc laser disc game in the 1980s. Uh, brilliant, brilliant game. Dragon Slayer? Dragon Slayer, yes. Dirk the yeah. Daring. You yeah. fight the dragon and save the princess. And I spent like probably over 50 bucks and I couldn't get past like five or six screens. That was awesome. Oh. Anyway, yes, the Mayas. Yeah. Mayans. Uh, and again, the backstory is the Elysians have been to Earth several times. And uh, they basically taken everything they wanted, but they were very much influenced 
on uh, our Earth's culture, our buildings, and how we've done things. Uh, almost like the Predators movie, I really like that aspect. How did three, and it's a really logical based question, how did three cultures at roughly the same time, worlds basically away, start building the same structures? And the way we're answering that is the Aletheans are here to, to influence them. So I, I, I would suggest probably borrowing and heavy from uh, the Mayans, maybe the Egyptians. Yeah, we've got the Mayans, the Egyptians, Nordic runes, uh, as Eve was saying, uh, Oriental. Um, yeah, I said, um, uh, then if you want to go really old, I would really go for Sanskrit because it's about more than 5,000 years old and because basically there um, in Gandhara there um, was Buddhism invented and uh, um, the sutras and everything else that uh, comes along with Buddhism was first recorded in um, in gosh uh, in Sanskrit and later uh, they it traveled to China to Korea to Japan and it's all kind of based uh, upon it so um, it's uh, there's a big chance that actually the Chinese writing was even heavily influenced by those writings uh, um, of early Buddhism. So if if you are going to take something Oriental, then uh, uh, yeah, um, Gandhara writings of Sanskrit would be um, uh, would be not a good. It's actually having letters instead of uh, pictograms like uh, Egyptian. So you can have nice fonts or um, well play around with them instead of yeah pictograms that uh, have to kind of resemble a specific thing. Uh, but yeah. But Mr. Clinton's like, holy crap! I didn't think I get all this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's great. Just having the uh, having having people think of things. I won't even thought of Sanskrit to look at. So, yeah, I'll be looking at all of these things and see what I can find. Sure. Like, because that's kind of not, not, ex, uh, not my expertise, but it was part when I was had to do East Asian studies to um, do some stuff uh, and research about Buddhism, uh, especially for, for art classes and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah, if, if you're going old, um, uh, here Sanskrit is is uh, is a way to go because well it's 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 not pict pictograms it's letters and um, uh, oh, okay. so they're letters but also they have other meanings like uh, you can have a letter like for in Greek for um, alpha and omega and you have a beginning and end. Uh, implied with uh, with a letter, even though it's a letter and not a, and a not a picture, like in other old languages, if that makes any sense. Absolutely, positively, I'm lost, but I think it sounds. Dumb. <laughs> uh, how about you, Mr. Miguel? Do you have anything to show tonight, buddy? Uh, I have one thing to show. Okay. Mr. Miguel and I are going to go uh, hit Tijuana and go rock climbing. That's our plan. Mr. Miguel is working diligently to get a screen up. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. I cannot see your screen. Well, I basically give my first, get my first try to the environment, and it, well, it didn't went as well as I thought. Um, hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to refresh something. All I seen was Steve's screen. He was typing. Okay. Go ahead, sir. So I, I. Uh, draw this as an idea to the to the outland um, kind of settlement and well in the background there was supposed to be a very big ship but I really didn't have time to to draw it so 
So I, I like that. Uh, I like kind of a, I like the wall, the gun placement. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I have to point out that the reason I love this the most is the space camper right in the middle, back up, back up to the building. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Great eye for detail. Good catch, uh, Mr. Steve. And I immediately thought space balls. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some Paul, Steve. <laughs> oh, oh, well, well, that, what? I said no one's seen that movie, but Steve and I evidently. <laughs> oh, I've just seen space <laughs> balls <laughs> too many times. God, plaid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, enough space balls reference. We could do that all night. Um, I, I like the idea of the wall looking thing because what do humans do? They build walls to keep stuff in and keep stuff out. Um, that's what they would do. They would build walls. Uh, I like the idea, of, like you said, a little space camper, a little settlement area. Um, almost like a refugee camp in some sort of ways. I see the tin. Uh, leaned up against uh, almost like an impromptu uh, lean tent uh, by I'm assuming it's a water tower looking thing. Then you have the nuclear waste plant right by the water thing. Like, <laughs> why is my face glowing? <laughs> well, well, it was it that thing was more like a nuclear reactor, uh, a small one. So uh, I don't know if what kind of power do these outcast humans would use. I, I just throw that idea, but it could be uh, something totally different. Well, it's got to be green energy, so we got a bandwagon here. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm sorry. Well, but Mr. I, Ray, I, what I, energy would they use? But actually, people are making small nuclear reactors that are neighborhood size today. And so I could easily see people in the future with, that are throwing things together with whatever they can get their hands on, you know, pieces of tin, old campers, whatever. They might be able, you know, it's a couple hundred years in the future, they might found one of these old things around and manage to get it uh, sort of working, uh, not necessarily safely. They'll have nuclear reactors in their iPhones. Is that is that Homer Simpson getting a drink of water there? You know, because he works in a nuclear plant. Man, you guys are a tough crowd tonight. Ah, uh, okay. Wow. Never mind. I like your thought process, Miguel. I, I do. I, I like kind of the refugee thing. The way I'm picturing this world, obviously without metal horses now, but the way I'm seeing, you have the pristine, very dry, sterile look of all the military government bases, and then. Uh, to me, it's, they're almost like the castles, the lords of the lands. Then you have all these little settlements around the areas of you know the military. I mean, that makes sense, right? You, you want to be near the big guys so they keep you safe. Well, kind of. Uh, well, my, my idea was, well, maybe this whole camp began inside the, this ship. And, and maybe this gigantic ship is actually a city or some kind of, of another settlement, but it's kind of a human need to go outside to, to get out so they can practically keep living in there forever. So they came out and made this kind of settlements. And necessity is the mother of all inventions. Yeah. So th there'd be a is that is that a uh, a wrecked uh, spaceship there? What in the background is that a wrecked spaceship? Yes, yes. I, it it doesn't look like, but I I didn't have time to actually draw the spaceship. So I can tell what you you mean, and that's another thing. We always have room for artists. Uh, we have all sorts of different level artists here, and that's one heck of an idea what you got. Uh, why not build a a city where you land, and you may not necessarily have a good landing. So again, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of a, a of a town by the wreckage of a their once great uh, spaceship. Because, I mean, who wants to move that stuff everywhere, right? It's heavy. You may not have metal horses to get your stuff around. Because Steve nicks that idea, you know. Well, anyway. I also like the idea of people still living, some of the people still living in in 
the habitable places, you know, the non-destroyed places. I like it. Really good idea. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ray, when we start this game, because I mean, we, I believe that we need to start it with the humans have been here already for a while, so they already have their buildings built and this and that. Are we? you think we have some really cool story ideas where we still have set settlers coming in and maybe something like this happened. I can see this being a really cool level design where, you know, there's a crash landing here and you could explore and do so many cool things with broken corridors like that. Uh, yeah, you could definitely do something like that, though you'd have to be careful that if indeed this was on Aletheia, as opposed to the Earth, then you wouldn't have a camper. They wouldn't have had a camper inside the spaceship. <clears throat> so something that looks like this would be on Earth, because these are Earth scraps that people yeah. scrounge. But yeah, the concept, absolutely. Uh, um, and... Is that a car down there? Yes, I. The, well, the camper is just this. It, it doesn't have to be a camper. I, no, I, I understand. I'm just come up with a vehicle. What I what, so when the zombies attack, they can get up I, there. Now, what I wanted to show here is that all these constructions are made of scraps that came from this spaceship. Maybe this couldn't be a camper. Obviously, it could be another vehicle like a camper, like something futuristic. But what I wanted to show was maybe these constructions are all. Uh, how do you say, they're all built from scrap and some vehicles are actually adapted as houses. Yeah, great. So maybe we can have a building that it's like the, like the cockpit of the ship and it's like a very big house. And, and that could exist on either Earth or Aletheia because you're going to have uh, on Aletheia, you're going to have the settlers that they send to start are going to be poor people. They're not going to be the rich and powerful. And they, you might actually have had an accident like this, and they're scrounging to, to, uh, to do whatever they can to survive. You'd have the same kind of thing going on on Earth, where we're, we're assuming that the, uh, the shield against the sun's uh, radiation is starting to erode, and the rich and powerful can live under domes that shield them from that, but the rest of the population can't, and they would also be living in things like this, where they could, whatever they could scrape together uh, to survive. So this kind of a situation could be on either planet. Cool. Um, uh, you kind of gave me an idea because um, depending on the class, for example, if you want to play uh, human, um, every class could kind of get a own starting, uh, you can say starting mission, or even have the same, for example, uh, it doesn't matter if you're military or you're a new settler, you're coming to Elysia, there's the settlement already and everything, but you're getting there and your ship crashes and the tutorial mission would be actually to get out of that uh, crashed ship. So you could use that as an actual environment. It's a great idea. I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> All right, I'm afraid Mr. Ryan is not going to be able to make it tonight, and I know he's worked really hard on all of us, and we will not steal his thunder, but hopefully he'll, we'll get him in the very first thing next week. Uh, so let's just do that. I can't talk. Let's discuss what we want to do next week. Uh, environments. Should we concentrate on some environments? I would love that instead of working alone. <laughs> all right. Not it. Not it. I'm teasing. Good practice for you here. All right, so I'm I'm making an art note down right now. Actually, I'll be at Buzz's house Saturday-ish, so I'll so you can make sure I'm on the right track. What environments are you wanting, Mr. Uh, Steve Curtis? Um, I kind of like the idea of going with a uh, like what a couple of uh, cities or villages or bases would look like from a larger perspective. 
Okay. Kind of like, kind of like your farm concept. Okay. And like, and like Miguel's. All right, I will. We can I'll give you two. Detail. Wh whose farm concept? <laughs> My melted igloo, smart Alec. Your farm idea, his concept. His melted igloo. <laughs> Seriously, where do you live? <laughs> we we know that Wolf originally came up with the idea of melted igloos. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ray, I love you very much. All right, so I'm down for uh, two. Uh, environment concepts for 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 why grandiose those type sort of things. Uh, what else do you need, Mr. Uh, Steve? Do I need a sign? Uh, well, who'll be working? On, are we putting everybody on it? Well, let's put at least one more person on it because we need to nail some stuff down. And I know I know you're busy, and we'll just keep Sid uh, doing what she's doing with uh, I guess character creation and. And whoever's left can continue doing the, the character creations. I would like to see Eve do some, uh, and I'm just saying, because if I have to do it, I want to see Eve do it, too. <laughs> I'm uh, at work ne next week. I'm doing night shifts, I think. Is it next? You can't tip to no. me. You emailed me your uh, work schedule. I know it like the back of my hand. No, it's the week after that. You're lu uh, you get lucky. All right, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Miguel, why don't you flesh out your idea a little further, and maybe give me a uh, like a couple of close-up shots of some of the some of the outland strewn together buildings. You talking to me? No. Well, me. Okay. I was. <laughs> You're so cute, Miguel. You there, buddy? Uh, yeah. Okay, Steve wants you to flush out your idea even more. Uh, I had a last thing to say about this. Um, what? Huh? What was that? Hello? Uh, uh, this thing over here. This gray thing. Uh -huh. uh, well, it's supposed to be some kind of uh, this gigantic greenhouse. So I I thought that I we don't know what kind of soil there was there in Elithia. I believe I think that people would construct these greenhouses to to grow their their food because I thought we we don't know what kind of of, of food we can find there. So we they had to to adapt the the, the environment in the inside this this thing too. To the, make the a greenhouse, like a yeah. Green? yeah. Well, some kind of green. Yeah, like a like a hot house. Yeah, like an igloo. No, she's <laughs> well, really? some something I mean, that would far. adapt the conditions so you can grow vegetables, air vegetables. Right. Well, uh, flesh out that idea, and then pick one or two of these structures you've got, and give me a little bit more of a close up. Okay. I think Eve should do like a, a military base, uh, a hangar base, or I can try, barracks. but I'm not promising anything. Oh, but you already have. Everyone here, Eve says she promised to do yes, it. I did. Totally, totally. Your English is slipping because you did say I promised. <laughs> and once more, you even promised that if you don't do it, uh, Wolf and I are going to come over in orange suits and throw kittens at you. You're welcome. For sure, I, um, I, but I'm not really, um, I'm not holding my breath since I still got a big ocean between us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you start now uh, uh, walking and swimming next week, you'll be here. But I can't we'll go our space out. horses and <laughs> yeah. fly there. It's time to mount up there, Wolf. Get on your orange space horse with interstellar capabilities, and we'll be there in a little bit. Because I'm not swimming in the ocean of sharks. The space penguin uh -huh. can swim you over the ocean. Sure. Exactly. All right. I've been um, doing some uh, an idea for a mount, uh, if you want to see it. Yeah, please. In the last couple of minutes. You will like it. It's spot black, so... 
I missed something. Nice. Yeah, very nice. I love and hate you at the same time, Eve. Is that like a wicked <laughs> rabbit? Something like that. I um. Like a dragon. Like, you know, I uh, play lots of MMOs, and some they have kind of this uh, mix between wolf and cheetah and rabbit with those long tail-like uh, ears, yeah. and it's kind of a mix of all of that's, those. That's you put a sa saddle on it and uh, domesticate it or use it as guard dogs or some stuff like that. I love that as a monster. Yeah, it could work Can you imagine well. them digging in your digging in your garden? <laughs> Silly <laughs> rabbits! <laughs> yeah, but the difference is these rabbits will eat you, just not your carrots. Yeah, well done. Something. suspiciously like a spot black to me. It, it was is. a spot black. And she made it even prettier. Well done. All right, yeah. so uh, Sid... Yeah. What do you want them to work on for characters? Uh, more steampunk slash old school space and just hints of cowboy junk. I mean, I could even try uh, some environmental stuff. I wouldn't guarantee anything, but I can have a whack at it. Let's do that. Do one, and then uh, let's, for, for grins and giggles, let's also... Draw a couple of her kids, just like teenagers. What would they be wearing? So that will give us an exercise in not drawing like hot chicks with big eyes or a masculine men. It will, uh, as artists, it will you know recalibrate what we're drawing and how we're doing it. And uh, let's go for a manga feel next week for the new characters, just because I, I like the the comic book stuff that Eve was doing. And again, it's always nice as an artist to be able to do more than one style and to stretch out of our comfort zone. And if we see something that we like, because we, we really haven't nailed down what style everything's going to be in the game. I mean, I, I'm very adept and love the, the American Fusion style. That does not mean that everything's going to be modeled in that style. Buzz and them might come back and say, you know, it's too, too hard on the engine. We're going to have to cartoon it down a little bit. So this might be a good exercise in that. If you want, I can uh, give you some pointers when it comes to manga. I've been doing it for, uh, since <clears throat> I think, since high school. Big Eyes, Small Mouth. No. There's a book I did once called that, Big Eyes, Small Mouth. But... I know that you did it, but I always kind of, I have to cringe because, uh, well, because of the background. As, as someone with Japan, uh, East Asian, Japan uh, studies, it always kind of cringe-worthy if, if you generalize it like that. Because it's actually a small fraction of the whole spectrum, but that's the most prominent one because it's the one that gets ported over to the States and Europe the most. But yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, you learn, you learn something every day. Very true. You bet your Sanskrit. I believe that was all inspired by Disney. There was a some Disney training in Japan. Some Disney artists train, and I think that's where that comes from. That make it form. Uh, actually, no. But um, I had uh, would have to look it up uh, because the first um, real manga, as what we understand it, is from Osamu Tezuka. Shortly after the war with Astro Boy and stuff That's like what that. That's uh, But it's also because of uh, they had also first animation studios and they have to keep it kind of simple, uh, and that's also a reason for um, for the design that they have it kind of super deformed and um, simple. Uh, and also the big fascination with robots and mecha and Japan. Same reason because their animation studios basically do just three frames per second and robots are really easy to animate that way. So that just anyway, well, for you. Awesome knowledge, very good. Tell you what, we have our assignments. I'm gonna do uh, two cityscapes and a couple of kids manga style. Sid you're gonna do at least one. 
uh, cityscape and at least one manga kid style. Eve, you're gonna do your best to do whatever you can do, Miguel. You do those close-ups uh, of what you've been working on. And Mr. Wolf, what are you gonna be working on? There's a Hello? printer in the background. You, 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 uh, you cut off, I mean, on my end, uh, after you said Mr. Wolf. I'm sorry. Uh, weren't you glad that I am back? Uh, what will you want to what do you want to work on for next week, buddy? Uh, that, that depends. Do you do you want me to work more on uh, on the concept stuff or the comic uh, for this week? Let, let's keep working on the comic because I definitely want. I'd love to have everything as done as it can be. So uh, when I'm down at 3D Buzz, the Buzz Cave, Sid and I can start putting putting word balloons to everything and get everything finalized and finished. I, I could try I could try and make some very rough uh, uh, concept things if I think of some stuff and see if anything that turns out yeah. right, go yeah. for it and mr. Clinton you should uh, hopefully have some something to show us uh, with your research by then correct sir hopefully awesome well guys and gals thank you very much for being part of this tonight uh, I feel terrible that the the space cowboys pretty much bit the I dust. Natural just got back. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, Mine crap. too. Uh, Mr. Nitro, are you there? Hold on. Unmuted. Hi. Hi. Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. So, uh, first of all, everything cool with you? Are you sorted out, or do you need to leave again very soon? Uh, well, possibly. I'm kind of in the middle of work, but I can talk quickly. Uh, then the best three minutes of your life. Tell us what you're developing. And again, it's on 3D Buzz forums. I got to read over it, but I didn't want to steal any of your thunder. I wanted it to come from the horse's mouth, so to speak, because my horse is now dead. So tell us what's been going on. Um, okay, so I've been trying to look for basically some sort of wiki and stuff so we can start putting up all our concept art and, and laws and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, originally I was thinking probably something like Confluence, but which is a really good wiki, um, but it's, it's cheap for the first 10 users, but it gets very expensive after that because it's designed for sort of businesses. Um, uh, I did contact Atlassian to see if they could do a better deal for us, but that didn't sort of pass through because we don't quite fall into like the uh, not-for-profit not category, I don't think. Um, the other options that I was thinking of is possibly MindTouch, but then they had they used to have a free open source version, um, which they went now they are now no longer supporting. Um, uh, the only other options left would be something like uh, MediaWiki, I think. Yeah, MediaWiki um, for a pure wiki solution. But I was thinking. Um, that's not very presentable though, so the other alternative is we could go something just like um, a WordPress site and in, there's a few wiki plugins which sort of convert WordPress into a more wiki style um, that we could go. That will allow us to have a lot more users um, adding content to it and okay. it should be a lot more presentable as well. Cool. So what do you need us to do or uh, what needs to happen? Um, we need to get uh, someone to install a WordPress site in 3D Buzz, and basically, if you can give me admin access to that site, then I should be able to finish setting it up. Sid, make that happen, all right? Um, well, I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but Nelson, I'm we're I'm hoping we'll be back Friday. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, talk to Angie too, Sid. I'm pretty sure that uh, they've got WordPress. All right. Yeah, yeah um, I think last time we spoke about it, they did mention that it should be fairly easy to set up WordPress. Are, uh, are we trying to make uh, like to show uh, in what order we did stuff? I mean, what, I mean, like what came first and our process, or are we just throwing them all out there? I think uh, it should probably be something that. Evolves, so yeah, it so should be the most recent we, work, but you right. could still so, have that history. That that's gonna that's gonna be a little difficult, I think, to to track that down and see. 
exactly what came first now that there's been so much stuff, I think. Yeah, well, starting from now, I would just say just get the most recent work up there um, and go from there. Yep, and, and we've got to start keeping track of it sometime. And uh, we can throw a couple of older pieces up there as well, but uh, we've got a lot of really good work. Every week I'm blown away by you guys, what everyone is doing right now. And I'm really impressed and proud of everyone for being a part of this. And there's no little player on stage here. We're all main actors right now. And I really believe we keep going, moving forward and, and working hard, and we get the development team going. Um, I'm hoping maybe by... Uh, Next year, we can have something, maybe not a finished game by any means, but we can have some models running around based off what we've come up with. You think it's viable, Mr. Steve? Oh, I think it's viable. Okay. I was going to say in six months. I'll see everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> really, I'm going to find out where you live. <laughs> I like the drawing, though, by the way. I just made me think of that. Melted eagle, thank you. Mr. Ryan, do you have any uh, any two cents or any thoughts or comments about tonight? And I'm not sure um, what you've heard or seen. I haven't seen a lot of tonight. I'm going to have to go back and watch the, the recording. No, I'm sure you will love my, my mechanical horse, right? I saw that. That's cool. <laughs> Steve hates it. <laughs> I'm big enough to let it go. If, if It could be a novelty thing. Yeah, I'm big enough to let that go if Wolf can let go of my melted igloo. Put a jetpack jet on it and you call it a deal. All right, it works for me. I'm going to color them orange, though. All right, any last thoughts from anybody? Mm, that would be a big no. I'm good. All right, we have our assignments. We have what we're going to do for next week. Um, I have no control over uh, when Mr. Nelson gets back, but when he does, I will, myself or Steve or Sid, we'll, we'll try to sort all this out for you, Mr. Ryan. I appreciate what you're doing too, sir. That's all right. All right, with that, everyone keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them. Uh, we'll tune in the same bat time, same bat channel next week. I will be broadcasting live from the Buzz Cave, so don't miss that. You guys have a great night.